history must be changed. Ahead looms a calamity. Ahead looms light, expunging all form and life. Twin dooms only you can forestall. Only you. Let expanse contract. Eon become instant. Throw wide the gates that we may pass. Only you. Only you. Throw wide the gates. Untold sorrow must be changed. Ahead looms a calamity. Eon become instant. Throw wide the gates! The light will expunge all life. Only you can forestall the calamity. Throw wide the gates. At last, I found you. Please, there's no cause for alarm. I confess, this is not where I had intended to meet. But the place of our meeting is of no consequence. Like the war you wage. Win or lose, the path you walk leads only to oblivion. The better path leads you here, to me. I have need of your strength. The battle is over, the danger past, but your work is not yet done. I'm afraid such questions will have to wait. We have precious little time and your work is not yet done. Go to the Crystal Tower. I have left something for you near its base. It will serve as a beacon of sorts. One which I pray will help you on your journey. All you need do is find it. I will take care of the rest. Soon, we will throw wide the gates. And the path to the first will be yours to walk at last. Now, now I have you. Stay with me. Focus on my voice. Let expanse contract. Eon become instant. Everything all right, Captain? I see. Weak or not, we should be on the lookout for more. But I see you've met my guest. I will escort him to the Crystarium myself, if you've no objections. Come with me. I will answer whatever questions you have when we are somewhere more private. Right then, before we plunge into the where's and wherefores, let me first thank you for answering my summons. I had intended to bring you directly to my personal quarters, but I fear my aim was slightly off. That you are still able to make the crossing unharmed is a great relief. And so, we come to the question of where. The realm in which you now find yourself belongs to one of the 13 reflections or shards. The first, to be precise, 
even if its inhabitants are largely oblivious to the fact. As to wherefore, having been awarded the rather grandiose title of Crystal Exarch, <laughs> I, in uh, my capacity as caretaker of the Crystarium, thought to seek the aid of you and your companions. Ah, that is a question with no simple answer. But all shall be explained in due course, I promise you. An inkling, yes. I can only beg your forgiveness. Matters here forced my hand. But all shall be explained in due course, I promise you. Let us begin with the glaring skies up above. Here in the first, the world has been all but consumed by primordial light. It began a century ago, by this realm's reckoning. A luminous flood swallowing everything in its path. More than nine-tenths of this star was lost. And the fortunate few who survived are hounded by abominations born of that catastrophe even now. Sin Eaters, we call them. The creature you saw earlier was one such monstrosity. It was to save the first from this menace that I learned to bridge the rift between worlds. That I might call upon the aid of the greatest of heroes. Though it meant depriving a world of its champion, I had to try. For in saving the first, you would bring salvation to the source as well. Uh, but what manner of host harangues his guests in the middle of the road? Let us continue our talk within the Crystarium. Welcome to the Ocula, my private study. We can speak here without fear of being overheard. I have much to explain. But the truths which I must touch upon in doing so would cause only distress and confusion to the people of this world. Pray keep that in mind. Now, I am sure you are desperate to know the fate of your fellow Scions. To put it simply, they are here in the first. Their arrival, however, was not as recent as you may imagine. Here, time flows at a different pace from that of the Source. In the space of a single hour in your home world, an entire year might pass in the first, and the reverse could also be true. The pace fluctuates without rhyme or reason, and it cannot be predicted. That said, we seem to be entering a period of near equivalence, and thus, for the moment, you need not overly concern yourself with the passage of time. As for your companions, however, Yustola and Urianger have dwelt here for three winters, all told, while Thancred's count stands at five. Even our more recent arrivals, Alfino and Alize, have lived in the first for almost a year. My intention had been to summon only you, but the art of reaching across worlds has proven exceedingly difficult to master. Thus it was that my fumbling hand closed upon those to whom your fate is most closely bound as well. As they were not the object of my summons, their transference was incomplete. Though they may appear to possess corporeal bodies, they are in truth merely spirits that one can see and touch. Consequently, while you yourself will be able to pass between worlds with relative freedom, they will not. Much as it grieves me, they are stranded here, unable to return. We spent every waking hour searching for a way to reverse the summoning. In the beginning, at least. As you may have surmised, however, our efforts met with little success. And then we all but abandoned the endeavor once Urianger shared with us the vision he had witnessed during his journey through the rift. 
In that chaotic no man's land between realms, time and space warp and blend in unexpected ways. What Uriange saw was the future, that which would one day come to pass. In his vision of tomorrow, the first was rejoined with the source. This collision of worlds brought about the eighth umbral calamity and the deaths of countless multitudes. Amongst those who perished, Uriange clearly saw the fall of the Scion's mightiest champion. He watched you die. And thus did the Scions embrace their exile, and began searching this world for a means to forestall the coming catastrophe in yours. Their souls are stranded in the first, yes, but they have fought on, desperate to save their home and you from destruction. Nor have their efforts been in vain, for it was they who finally established that the elimination of the Sin Eaters will indeed serve to prevent the Calamity. Considering these circumstances of our meeting, you would be forgiven for doubting my version of events. And so, before all else, I would suggest you track down your comrades and hear the tale from their lips. I shall of course be happy to assist in these reunions, and you need not make any decisions regarding your involvement until you are certain of where you stand. Meanwhile, I promise I will not rest until I have found a way to help your friends return home. What say you? Have I earned your trust for the moment, at least? Excellent. You will not regret this. With that settled, we shall have to see about getting you ready for the road. Travelling across the rift has no doubt left you weary. I will arrange for a room where you might rest in comfort. While it's being prepared, perhaps I can show you around. Ah, yes! You must be curious about the currency. Fear not, the gill you carry will serve you well enough. Each nation once minted its own coins, but was all a jumbled mess following the Flood. After much debate, the local merchants eventually elected to revert to the old ways, wherein a coin's value was decided by the worth of its metal. As for a unit of measurement, we agreed upon the term gill. A word borrowed from coins uncovered within the Crystal Tower here. And as our traders peddled their wares across the land, so too did our usage of gill become common practice. From what Yostola tells me, a standard coin from the source equates to exactly one gill here, or near enough not to matter. Our way of life has benefited greatly from the artifacts we recovered from the tower, some of which may be familiar to you. But I fear it would not be practical for us to provide everything to which you are accustomed. You shall need a means to access the commodities of your home world. A van kerm sin? My dear Feo Ul, paragon of pixie kind. For you, I have the most vital task. This fine gentleman is a friend from a distant realm. And we have need of a means to ferry things back and forth from his home. Might you be able to assist us in this matter? Mayhap her message to your friends in the source to inform them of your safe arrival. As you heard, that was Feo Ul of the Pixies. Their kind possess an affinity for magic akin to that of arcane beings. They rarely show themselves in populated areas, but Feo is insatiably curious even by Pixie standards, and seems to have taken a liking to the Crystarium. Right, we were going to organize a room for you, weren't we? Come along. Ah, how did you find your new quarters? I trust you were able to rest. I was not aware the room was haunted, and you were rather tired. Well, should you receive another visitation, be sure to let me know.
That is good to hear. Should you want for anything, pray let me know. Now, let us return to the subject of the Scion's whereabouts. This map shows the lands of Norvrand, the only area to be spared the Flood of Light. The Crystarium is here, in the region known as Lakeland. And to the north is the Fairy Kingdom of Il Meg. That is where you'll find Orianger. To the east lies the once prosperous civilization of Rak Tika. Your Stola is stationed there, in the heart of the forest. Alas, neither location can be reached without considerable difficulty. As such, I would suggest you first seek out one of the twins, each of whom is stationed but a short flight from the Crystarium. Alphino is on Calusia, an island off the western shore. It is home to a city called Yulmor where the rich and privileged while away their days in idleness. For his part in furthering our cause, Alphino journeyed there to meet with the citizenry and forge alliances. From what I hear, he has since kept himself busy gathering information around the main settlement. Alize, meanwhile, traveled south to the arid wastes of Armoreng. They lie upon the very edge of the inhabitable world, where the flood of light was halted. Those who dwell there live in constant fear of attack by the Sin Eaters. In contrast to her brother, Alize felt that her energies would better be spent learning about the enemy, and thus she sells her services as a guard, both to hone her skills and gather information on our foe. So, will it be Calicia or Armoreng? It matters not which you choose to visit first. Simply inform me once you have made your decision, and I will see to it that you are provided with a suitable mount. Ah, but you must be wondering about Thancred. He has taken up with a new companion, and is presently engaged as a wandering hunter of Sin Eaters. Being ever on the move, his whereabouts are often difficult to ascertain, but I am certain your paths will cross ere long. And so you return. Have you gained a better understanding of the crisis now faced by the first? Indeed. Those abominations are a calamity in their own right. And I can well imagine how hopeless the task of eradicating them must seem to you. But after countless battles and untold sacrifice, we have identified a potential weakness. Sin Eaters are drawn to serve the strongest of their kind, a class of creature we call Light Wardens. And from what we have been able to ascertain, only a handful of these entities exist. Just as an ant colony will perish in the absence of its queen, we believe that the death of a Light Warden will cause the lesser creatures within its sphere of influence to disperse. Agreed. Thus we will need to occupy or otherwise divert his forces whilst we proceed with the business of eliminating the Wardens. Until we have done so, all other considerations must be set aside if we are to forestall the Eighth Umbral Calamity. Your uncertainty is understandable, given the circumstances. Perhaps a more detailed explanation is in order. To begin at the beginning, then. In the ancient past, a single star was divided into 14 worlds. This is the source, your home. These others are the 13 shards, in whose number we find the first. Though physically separate, 
They retain a connection to each other, and with the Source especially. Now, let us assume that a given element in one of the shards attains abnormal ascendancy. Just as water will flow from the highest point to the lowest, the excess energy will begin trickling into the Source. And such an influx of ether will of course exert a palpable influence. If the element in question were fire, then drought and wildfires might ensue. If it were ice, one might expect the weather to turn bitterly cold. As ether continues to pour in, such phenomena will become more and more extreme, until eventually, a single, untimely event triggers a disaster which cracks the barrier dividing the two worlds. What was once a trickle now becomes a deluge, sweeping the shard along to be rejoined with the source. At the same time, the element which held sway in the shard is unleashed in full, its energies amplifying the original disaster to truly catastrophic proportions. An earthquake thus magnified might strike with enough force to shatter continents. A tidal wave might swell to a size capable of drowning entire nations. These devastating events are what we refer to as umbral calamities. Seven times has a calamity befallen the source. Seven times has a shard been absorbed. At present, the light-drowned realm of the first stands perilously close to meeting the conditions for a rejoining. It is the Sin Eaters who are to blame for the Light's continued dominance. In addition to attracting their lesser kin, the Light Wardens I mentioned earlier radiate ether, saturating every corner of their territory with light. Even here in the flood-spared region of Norvrat, their influence is strong enough to banish night from the sky. Thus, if we are to restore balance to the first and head off a potential calamity, it is imperative that we put each and every Light Warden to the sword. Alert the Guard. We should be prepared in case the fighting reaches the Crystarium. You have command of our forces in the field, Captain, but hold off on entering the town until I arrive. That goes for Alphano and Alize as well. Pray, lend us your strength. Such a fight will provide you with far greater insight than any explanation I could offer. That will not be necessary, Captain. Though I appreciate your concern, the eternal light of these creatures has confounded us for nigh on a hundred years. For each we have put down, another has risen up in its place, born of the self-same ether relinquished by its predecessor. But now we have a way to contain that corruption. The blessing of light, and the hero who wields it now stands before you. Behold, the monster's power is broken, and the world twisted by its touch returns to its rightful form. How many years have I waited for this moment? For the one possessed of her blessing. For you. You have vanquished the Light Warden of Lakeland, and for the first time in a century, darkness has returned to the mantle of night. Without the ever-present light to sustain them, the Sin Eaters will have no choice but to retreat. Yet our victory is far from complete. Though darkness has fallen here, the other Wardens yet bask beneath burning skies, feasting upon what little life remains. Even should it cost me all I have, I would see each and every one of them slain, that this world might be spared from oblivion. 
Not only for the first, but for the source as well. Save one, and we save the other. But, be that as it may, I concede it was wrong of me to summon you to this fight against your will. I swear on my life, I will one day atone for that deed. But for the present, I beg you, stay and see this fight to its conclusion. Cast down the Wardens and restore darkness to the first. On behalf of the first, I offer you my deepest thanks. I do it for my people, of course. To give the Crystarium the tomorrow it deserves. There are... things... which we can ill afford to lose. And... I sensed from the first that I had a part to play in preserving them. <laughs> Forgive me. I fear the events of the day may have taken their toll. Despite appearances, I am an old man. One burdened with many difficult memories, some too painful to recall. Come then, my warriors of darkness. Let us gather the surviving villagers and make our way back to the Crystarium. You are coming at a good time. As you may have heard, we have something of a quandary on our hands. Lax and Loft here in Lakeland. Yulmor has sent one of its airships. They have questions for us concerning the death of the Light Warden. Their emissary makes his way here even as we speak. Indeed. It was inevitable they would come knocking. The only question was how soon. A moment, Captain, if you would. Everyone, gather round. I do not wish to show our hand prematurely. Forgive me this liberty. Vanish. Enter. Well, well. The commander of the Yulmoran army himself. To what do I owe the honor, General Ranjit? You are clearly in some haste, my lord. But before I uh, address your question, you must allow me one of my own. What is Yulmor's interest in this? I see. Since you have been so candid, I too shall speak my mind. Regardless of who is responsible, the Crystarium rejoices in the Light Warden's death and welcomes the return of the night sky. If Yulmor considers this tantamount to aiding those you term villains, then by all means, carry out your retribution. Know, however, that even should every innocent soul in the Crystarium perish, nothing can stop that which has been set in motion. An artist and his assistant, no. I cannot say I do. I fear he did. The General is not a man to be trifled with. He is a warrior of fearsome repute who has led Yulmor's army since before Vorthri's time, when the nation still spearheaded the fight against the Sin Eaters. 
One does not command the world's mightiest army and for so long without possessing exceptional instincts. It is noble of you to say, Master Alphano, but my people have been in harm's way since long before you arrived. Yulmor has ever yearned to rule over what remains of the world. Even should we surrender the Warrior of Darkness to them, they would find some other pretext upon which to invade. The people of the Crystarium know this only too well, which is why, when the time comes, I am certain they will fight to the last man. If truth be told, I would not have been surprised had Ranjit declared war here and now. Ah, of course. How remiss of me. I had intended to speak to you of Minfilia. There is, however, much to say, and precious little time in which to say it. I think it best that you seek out Moren at the Cabinet of Curiosity. He will be able to enlighten you. Alphino, Alize, would you care to accompany your friend? You doubtless have insights of your own to offer on the matter. In the meantime, I will set about making provisions for war. You are doubtless eager to attempt Minfilia's rescue, and with your combined strength you may well succeed. But as I said earlier, I do not wish to show our hand unless absolutely necessary. It was not merely the night sky that you restored to us, but hope. Hope for the future of Norvrand. Unlike you, we cannot contend with the Light Wardens, but so long as hope burns in our hearts, we will fight on regardless. This I will prove to you. My friends, I thank you for gathering at such short notice. There is something I would ask you all. As many of you are aware, I received an emissary from Yulmor a short while ago in the form of General Ranjit. To my dismay, the General condemned the slaying of the Light Warden, and warned me in no uncertain terms that, should the Crystarium cast its lot with the Warrior of Darkness, there would be war. Let none be mistaken, we would be hard-pressed indeed to resist the might of Yulmor. Some would even call it suicide. And yet my heart cries out to fight. Better that than relinquish the hope that swelled in my breast when I beheld the night sky for the first time in a hundred years. Or so says my heart. My mind, meanwhile, reminds me that to follow my heart would be to risk everything we have accomplished thus far. Clearly, this is not a decision to be made lightly, nor less alone. And so I put the question to you all. What should we do? It appears we have a consensus. Let it be known that the Yulmoran host at Laxon Loft has taken the Oracle of Light captive. They fear the power she holds over the Sin Eaters, and doubtless intend to imprison her once more. So, I move that we rescue the Oracle, grant her a place among us, and let that be our answer to Yulmor's ultimatum. And there you have it. If Yulmor wishes to denounce us as villains, then we shall embrace our villainy. Will you do so as well? Very good. See to your preparations. <laughs> if excitement is your desire, then I bid you join the guard. Captain Lena will give you your orders. Break! I would sooner see it raised than conquered. Suffice it to say, we are ready to receive you. I think not, General. 
I've quite exhausted my tricks. If you mean to give chase, I will not stand in your way. But you would do well to tread warily, for your quarry goes to a place where even Yulmore dare not bear its steel. Ilmeg, the Fairy Kingdom. Then let us discuss the Sin Eaters. I would begin by thanking you all for your efforts thus far. In striking down the Light Wardens of Lakeland and Ilmeg, you have accomplished more in your short time here than all of our forces managed in the last century. Indeed, and their precise whereabouts are as yet unknown. Which is why I propose we divide our forces and conduct a systematic survey of each region. Once we have found our quarry, we may then determine how best to proceed. Then I would ask that you journey to Raktika. There you will find Yustola. With her assistance, I doubt the Warden will evade your grasp for long. I fear I may be to blame for that. I had every intention of relaying the news of your arrival, but she is... disinclined to speak with me. You have visited her, have you not? Might I trouble you to... My thanks. While you are all out in the field, I shall be here attending to business. I had somewhat fancifully contemplated joining the search myself, but other matters demand my attention. A missive from Lord Vorthry. He invites me to join him in Yulmore to discuss the recent conflict at Leda Loran. I should be surprised if it were not. Nevertheless, I must seize this opportunity to speak with him, even if only a few words are exchanged. Though my power will be much diminished so far from the tower, it is a risk I am willing to take. Master Alphano, might I impose upon you to accompany me to Yulmore prior to beginning your reconnaissance? Then let us make ready. Safe travels to you all. Lord Forthree, how good it is to see you. How long has it been? Not since your inauguration, unless I'm mistaken. Too long, at any rate. May I say how humbled I am to be invited not only into your city, but your home. You are as generous as ever. I might ask you the same thing. It should be clear, even to you, that defeating the Light Wardens represents the world's only hope of survival. Even now, the people of Lakeland and Ilmeg rejoice in the return of night. For a hundred years, they yearned for a means to fight back against the Sin Eaters, and at last they have found one. Yet you choose to stand idly by and do nothing. Why? A paradise fit to grace the Eighth Umbral Era. A minor epiphany, nothing more. You have always held sway over those around you. Those who defy you must submit or die. What sits before me is the inevitable result of bloated privilege and unchecked power. But man is more resilient than you think. His achievements are not the product of violence and bloodshed, but compassion and understanding. This calamity is but another crisis to be overcome, and we will once we eliminate the Sin Eaters. You underestimate them, Lord Forthry. They see further than you think. I have beheld it in the blood and sweat and tears of those who would sacrifice everything for a future they may never know, that their children may never know. I have beheld it in the hopes and dreams of those who came before which we bequeath to those who come after, that they might in turn 
build upon the foundations laid by our forebears. These are the bonds which hold man and his world together, not your gilded chains, and I will resist your every effort to shackle him. My friends, with your aid we have weathered a brutal assault. As I was saying, it was only with your aid that we weathered this assault. Without it, the Crystarium and all who dwell here would now be gone. Thank you. We are blessed to have you with us. As for the attack itself, Vorthree may call it Divine Retribution, but Sin Eaters are creatures of instinct. A coordinated assault is unprecedented. Moreover, in the absence of a Light Warden, there should have been no compulsion for lesser Sin Eaters to congregate here en masse. All of which points to a single, unavoidable conclusion. Indeed. What I mistook for Bluster was in fact the truth. The Sin Eaters are his to command. But if he imagines this show of force will convince us to bend the knee, he is sorely mistaken. You could say that, yes. But I am wiser for the experience, nevertheless. It appears he has mastered a technique which allows him to enslave the minds of others. A fact I discovered when he attempted to use it on me. Had I not anticipated his treachery, I might well have joined them. But seeing his invitation for what it was, I sent a glamour in my stead. I rather doubt such tricks will avail me a second time, however. To what do I owe the pleasure that is your extended stay? And risk souring your budding relationship? I think not. Much as I dislike you, there are more useful targets for his energies. And I'm not in the habit of pointing him at my enemies like a weapon. I see. You had a hand in Alag as well. You would know what I am? I am the adjudicator of the sacred history with which you dared trifle. I am keeper of this tower's boundless wisdom. The wisdom of ages without age, of everywhere and nowhere. The great work of those who tamed the wings of time and grasped the nature of the rift. Tis a boon born of the sacrifice of brave heroes who gave their lives for a brighter future. I will not see their hopes and dreams squandered. The history which led us here will be unwritten. I promise you that. On that much, we are in agreement. <clears throat> Forgive the intrusion, but Minfilia, that is, Reen, and the others were asking after you. Is everything all right? That pain again! And did it pass? Thank goodness for that. I would not wish to see you suffer. Though I know only too well how much you have suffered on our behalf in recent days. Indeed, I have no right to impose upon you further. Nevertheless, I must ask one thing of you. That you survive this, no matter what. When the dust settles, you must return to your world, for the battles to come, and the wars yet unwon. The final Light Warden is all that stands between us and victory. There is still much we must do to prepare, but for now, I will see if there is aught that may remedy the strange affliction which plagues you. Of that I have no doubt. 
Even if I had my pick of every Reflections heroes, I could not have asked for a finer champion. Indeed it is. But for now, put all such concerns from your mind. Yes, I believe it will. Once the tyranny of light is ended, the people of the Crystarium will be safe, and the future that must be shall come to pass. I'll not keep you from your rest any longer. Take as much time as you like. There you are. May I assume you've had your fill of rest? That is well. Now that we are all present, let us speak of our plan. Thus far, we have vanquished four light wounds, restoring night to much of Norvrand. Only one remains, that of Colusia. And with Reen to guide us, I am certain we will find it. Speak freely, Captain. An intriguing use of resources. I rather doubt Lord Vorthree's concern for the safety of his citizens. Agreed. See to your preparations then and make for Colusia. God's willing, this hunt will be the last. Let us see it through to the end. I wish to observe the final struggle with my own eyes. I arrived at bottom rung too late to accompany you, but I was in time to join Urianger and the others. Come, let us see how this unfolds. If we have learned that much, then the Machina have served their purpose. We are at your disposal, as are our Amaro and Chocobos. I take it we will be assisting Master Chai, though I am quite sure he has everything under control. The future is where my destiny awaits. <gasps> Forgive me, I was lost in a dream. I needed some fresh air and thought to rest for a moment. It would seem I am more fatigued than I realized. Too much time away from the tower, I fear. It drains me, leaves my body frail and weak. Though, in truth, it is debatable whether I can still call this my body. When first I turned my mind towards the salvation of the world, I came to the conclusion that it would take many long years, many more than remained to me. And so I made myself one with the Crystal Tower, that I might live indefinitely. I am but an extension of it now, hence my weakness the farther I travel and the longer I am away. It has been quite a journey. But thanks to you, the end is in sight. My wish will finally be fulfilled. How goes the construction effort? Then this may be the last moment we have to ourselves for a while. Come, sit with me. Tell me, when all of this is over, what will you do? In the hundred years they have existed, no one had come close to ridding us of even a single Light Warden. 
Yet already you yearn for the next challenge. You truly are a world apart from us all. That would be well deserved. You might consider roaming Norvrat not as her savior, but as a simple sightseer. Viewed through such eyes, I am certain she would seem quite different. Well, you needn't hurry to decide. I was merely curious to know what sort of future lay in store for a hero with his life ahead of him. Ah, yes. Even should we succeed in forestalling the Eighth Umbral Calamity, the Spectre of War will remain. But to declare your intent with such easy resolve, you truly are a hero's hero, my friend. But whatever it is you decide to do, I have every confidence that you will do well, for you have the strength to forge your own path. You will leave countless lives better than you found them, and the souls you touch will never forget your kindness. Then, in trying times, when you question your worth and your choices, they will raise their voices to remind you of the difference you have made. And thus will your deeds come to affirm your path. Remember this. Of me? You mean what I intend to do afterwards? When this is over, indeed. I once told you that there are things we can ill afford to lose. Things, I said. Though in truth, I spoke of a person, one who is unaware of the full extent of my plans. Though he deserves to know, I have good reason to keep my counsel. I have come to terms with this in my mind, yet my heart yearns to lay everything bare. For he is my inspiration, and I would give much and more for the chance to speak with him as friends with no thought of concealment. Should he indulge me with his tales, I would regale him with my own about my efforts in Norvrand, perhaps. Though, ultimately, that tale is more yours than it is mine. Then, I would ask him about his next adventure. And if he should wish me to be a part of it, oh, how happy it would make me. Together we would travel the lands and cross the seas and take to the skies upon the eternal wind. My heart swells simply to imagine it. But all of this is contingent upon our victory in the coming battle. The people of this world have entrusted their hopes to us. We cannot fail them. Nor those who roused me from my slumber. Thank you for your company, my friend. Let us return to Amity. Four three marshals the Eaters to his defense. This was only to be expected. We must try and draw as many of them down to the ground as possible. It may not be enough, but we have no other choice.
This I did not expect, but I will gladly accept the help. I will send word to Yerstela and the others. Join them at the foot of Mount Gulg and be ready to make the ascent. The combined power of every Light Warden is too terrible a burden for any one soul to bear. And so I shall relieve you of it. I will channel this profusion of power to the Crystal Tower and use it to travel to other worlds. As I have dreamed of doing ever since I first learned of their existence. Who would choose to remain here in this dying realm when they might go elsewhere and begin anew? Not I. And thus, thus did I use you. At journey's end, an opportunistic thief makes off with the hero's prize. A paltry way to end a chapter, I concede. Yet your tale will continue, and my role in it will scarcely be remembered. Worry not. Whatever should become of me, I will be happy and free, safe in the knowledge that I have played my part. Thank you for fighting for this world, for believing. Fare you well, my friend, my inspiration. In essence, yes. A difficult story to swallow, I am sure. Certainly. But where to begin? I should start with those great minds who survived the Calamity, Sid Garland being perhaps the greatest. In hopes of staying the unending tides of war, he and his fellows pursued all manner of possible solutions. One of these was rooted in a theory which unified several fundamental principles discovered over the course of the Warrior of Light's adventures. It proposed a method by which one could enter the river of time, traverse the rift, and leap between worlds. Perfecting that idea, however, was a work which consumed their lifetimes, and thus was it left to future generations to decide whether theory would be put into practice. But all the while, the world continued to burn. Hope was a feeble outpost, beset on all sides by thievery and misery and murder. People cried out in despair, There is no hope! We are finished! Mankind is finished! Then others raised their voices in answer. Though we be beyond salvation, those who came before may yet be saved. We will forge a crossroads and pave the way for a different future. By the wisdom of our forebears, we will prevent this calamity from ever having come to pass. The fighting went on unabated. But some few took up Sid's research and labored to realize those impossible ideas. After two centuries of labor, 
their descendants finally succeeded in awakening the Crystal Tower, an integral part of the process, and, in doing so, roused its caretaker, me. By this stage, scholars had largely established the phenomena underpinning the rejoining, and identified the first as the shard which precipitated the eighth umbral calamity. This grand structure was already capable of storing the energies required to attempt the translocation. All that remained was to augment some few of its functions based upon the theoretical models of Sid and his compeers. Some while before, as it turned out, it is all but impossible to predict how time will flow between one world and the next, and we missed our mark by almost an entire century. But this only worked in our favor. The Sin Eaters could not be defeated without the blessing of light, and summoning the only man who might stand a chance against them would require decades of preparation. I am aware of the consequences. It is for that very reason Sid and his colleagues bequeathed their legacy as an offering, and not an edict. To give all of oneself for the happiness of others, and with no promise of reward, it is a hard thing to ask. Harder still for those condemned to survive in a world which pitted brother against brother. Indeed, you are right to call the execution of this plan miraculous, though the force which held it together was nothing so inexplicable. It was him. The warrior of light has been our unbroken thread. Where others would stumble and fall, he would rise above. Where others would break and run, he would carry on. The Warrior of Light's tale is one of unyielding bravery. To tell it was to feel courage. To hear it was to feel hope. It was a breath of inspiration in an age of suffocating shadow. In the histories of a fallen nation was our hero hailed as its greatest ally. In the time-worn pages of a noble's memoirs were his deeds joyously retold. For many, these stories were the flame which warmed them through the coldest of nights. And so it should come as little surprise that the plan found no shortage of volunteers, concerning as it did the Warrior of Light himself. It was their chance to add their own verse to the hero's saga. He was the Lodestar that brought them all together to send their final message back through time and space to him. The light of your legacy was our torch in the darkness. Burn bright again, and live. I am merely the bearer of that wish, come to ensure it is safely delivered. That you will be my accomplice? T'was you yourself who convinced me of your suitability when you spoke of how you learned of the Flood and of your part in arranging Minfilia's journey to the First. Your actions showed uncommon resolve. T'was clear you were committed to the cause of saving this world. I knew I could trust you to choose the right path forward even if that choice came with a heavy price. When all is said and done, and the last of the Light Wardens lies slain, 
I will absorb their corrupted ether. And then I will die. Knowing what I know of your companions, not to mention your champion, they will try to stop me. But in saving one, they would save none. Therefore, I implore you to aid me in concealing my identity and ensuring this tale ends as it must. To this end, I would have you take what I have told you of the Calamity and make of it a portent, a prophetic vision you beheld in the swirling chaos of the Rift. History remembered the Warrior of Light, as I knew it would. And I will suffer no other to rescue the champion whose star has charted my course. I will see this tale to a happy end, my friend. There has been enough tragedy. We stand together! I could not well leave matters half finished. Let expanse contract, Eon become instant. Champions from beyond the rift, heed my call! to start. I believe I owe you all an apology, and you most especially. It's good to be awake. As ether obeys the cycle, as death and decay gives way to new life, So too do the memories we share inspire others to rise to greatness. For we who walk before may lead those who walk after. Your road goes ever on, as does your story, as does your legacy. Such is the hero's lot, to touch the lives of countless others. By your deeds has the blinding light been banished from these skies, and the Sin Eaters driven to retreat. Although our many hurts will be years in the mending, I have faith that this world and her people will one day be whole once more. With no rejoining in prospect, the Source need no longer fear the coming of an Eighth Umbral Calamity. So I do. I wonder if that other age continues onward somehow, cut adrift from time's flow. 
Or have I simply etched myself a place upon this new block of history? Either way, this is an unexpected development. As the summoner of your souls, my death was meant to release you back to your world. Yet I am very much alive, and you are still stuck here in the first. Then I see no reason to delay. I can open the path from here. Ha! <laughs> of course! I shall strive for utmost accuracy. No strange forests or unplanned passengers, I promise. Just a moment while I attune the portal. Then you can be on your way. When I was a boy, many long years ago, I yearned to stand tall as the heroes of Eld. But like a fool seeking to pluck the stars from the heavens, my every attempt to reprise their deeds fell short. And then one day, an all but forgotten dream from my youth stood before me in the flesh. A hero who looked at the horizon and beyond and saw I knew not what. All I knew was that I would give anything to stand at that hero's side. Would that it was so easy. The glory of the heavens was ever beyond the grasp of those who never thought to reach for it. But if I have gained anything from all of this, it is the courage to stretch out my hand. Do you hear me, Grahatia? This is no time for sleeping. Yes, of course. Then let us proceed. I, I think it best that you begin by providing a summary of Mistress Kryle's findings. Perhaps an explanation of the method by which I brought you here will yield some inspiration. Ere I begin, it must be noted that I am by no means a gifted mage. In order to employ powerful magics, I must rely upon the Crystal Tower and its boundless reservoirs of energy. The magic that summoned you was no exception. It is a singular spell, adapted through painstaking effort from the technique that transported me to the first. To use an analogy, it works by cutting a hole in the fabric of reality. A hole tailored to the object of summoning, through which it and it alone may pass unscathed. Though I succeeded in creating said hole, I failed to latch onto my intended target. Instead of you, the spell found those close to you, and ended up summoning them in their... incomplete state. I would not soon throw my life away, not after the lengths you and yours went to save it. And so long as I breathe, I will spare no effort to see you safely home. But should all else fail, and your lives be at stake, 
There remains one sure method. Oh. Oh. What was that for? What did you just... Soul preservation and transference. Hmm. I believe I know of someone who may be able to assist us. On the far shore of the Source, there stands a great palace built by the Elves. It was forsaken in the wake of the Flood, but a certain new Mo chose to make their home there soon after. Though they have long lived as a recluse, they once occupied a place of honor in Verbert's royal court, and it is said that none in all of Norvrant is more knowledgeable than they on matters of the soul. <laughs> a worthy question. Years ago, I myself tried and failed to solicit their cooperation in the battle against the Sin Eaters. No sooner had I begun to make my plea than they unleashed a swarm of their familiars upon me. Unlike me, however, you have curried favor with the Fae Folk. By that merit alone, I am hopeful that they would grant you an audience. They may still be inclined to turn you away, of course, but if their knowledge might feasibly facilitate your return home, we have to try. Backlog, tis good to see you again after all these years. And judging by your vigorous greeting, I dare say the feeling is mutual. To be sure, a simple shake of the hand would have sufficed by way of welcome, but I shan't complain. But you must be wondering as to the purpose of our visit. We come to beg your assistance in a most urgent matter. Our comrades' very souls are in danger. If we are to save them, we will need the benefit of your unsurpassed knowledge on the matter. Please, will you not sit and hear our plea? Commensurate with your contribution to our cause. No more and no less, I promise you. With that settled, might I impose upon you to join us at the Crystarium? I'm afraid the nature of my friend's predicament calls for absolute secrecy. Everything we told you, of the Source, the Shards, the Seven Umbral Calamities, all of it is true. I realize how fantastical it sounds, and I would not blame you for doubting our testimony. But given your expertise, you must surely have noted the peculiar nature of their souls. As I said before, were it not for their heroism, the skies over Norvrant would still be awash with light, the realm yet at the mercy of Vorthri and the Sin Eaters. After all they have done for our home, seeing them safely back to their own it seems the very least we can do. You will help us then? Now that we are all here, what news from the Source? Then let us address that issue. Our long search for a means to see you safely home may well be nearing its conclusion. Thanks in large part to Urianger and Beklug's invaluable insight, we have succeeded in fashioning a vessel for the journey. That being the case, we must either alter the process of inheritance so as to require no such thing, or determine a means by which my blood may permeate the vessel. I am hopeful that the records found within this tower will yield the knowledge we require to pursue one or the other of these avenues. I know that you can ill afford to wait, and it pains me that I must ask you to do so. I can only reaffirm my promise to you that a solution will be found. Whatever it takes, I will see you safely home.
I do hope you haven't come to tell us that mortal peril fast approaches. Why not speak in here? She knows I don't mind. Unless... she didn't want to. So, that is a warrior of light of the first. I've not had the pleasure of making his acquaintance, but as you all seem to be in agreement, I gather this is no simple case of mistaken identity. Given their fondness for posthumous possession, I would have to agree. From what I understand, the Warriors of Light were laid to rest in Yulmor by those whom they had aided in life. At the time, some few still remembered them as heroes. Needless to say, four of them were subsequently exhumed to serve as the Virtues. And if one knew where to look, Ardbert too would not have been difficult to find. Whatever the reason, I hope it holds true. I dare not contemplate what might come to pass otherwise. Agreed. Tis plain that simply speaking out against him will not avail us. At best, it would only serve to confuse the people. And I would hesitate to do anything which might tarnish Ardbert's reputation once more, nor yours by association. That being the case, it may be wise to keep a covert eye on this Ardbert's movements as we attempt to discern his purpose and how best to mitigate his influence. Foils again. If I cannot imbue the infernal thing with my power via magical means, we may need to devise a way to infuse the vessel with my blood after all. I'm fine. And given to stubbornness, I'm afraid. Especially when I have a stake in the outcome. Ah, I wasn't aware you already had a guest. If the conversation is constructive, I shall not intrude. But if you seek to stir up trouble, Elidibus, then I must insist you leave at once. <gasps> Worry not. I seem to be unharmed. Oh, uh, this. This is my own doing, the consequence of my recent exertions. It is the Tower's way of compensating me for the demands I have placed on it. Rest assured, it is no great inconvenience at present. Indeed, I told Beck Lug as much, but they would not be persuaded and sent me away to rest. No need to make a fuss. Strange as it may sound, I consider it something of a badge of honor. One of the brave souls who saw me delivered unto the first once said that the world shall ever have a place for tales of heroism so long as we have need of inspiration in our lives. Though he and his fellows had no way of knowing whether their mad scheme would amount to anything, they knew that the attempt alone would inspire hope. Or so they hoped. <laughs> a more optimistic lot one would be hard-pressed to find. They said they would find a means to save our God's forsaken world, just as soon as they had sent me on my way. Said it with such confidence that, for a fleeting moment, I half believed them. Such faith, 
such courage in the face of unrelenting despair. For a long time, it was more than I could bear to remember them. But having come this far, having sent full many on their way myself, I see things more clearly. To take action is to hope. To believe, to choose to believe, is to take the first step towards a brighter future. And why do I tell you this? Because I want you to indulge me in a little recklessness. Needless to say, I have a plan. And when all is said and done, I will ask yet another favor of you. What's wrong? Their zeal is to be applauded. It is but a pity I cannot encourage them on their course. I quite agree. This approach was not without its own complications, however, relying as it does upon blood, which inanimate objects notably do not possess. We duly explored methods of suffusing the vessel with drops of the aforementioned. Alas, our painstaking experimentation succeeded only in making me feel faint, and singularly failed to imbue the crystal with the necessary properties. It was then that an idea occurred to me, namely that we might fuse the vessel not with normal blood, but with my crystallized essence. It falls well short of offering up my life in exchange for yours, which was your only stipulated prohibition, as I recall. And it is but a small price to pay for delivering you home. One is for testing purposes. I will personally use it to see whether the crystal functions as it should. Yes, in theory, at least. But there is a distinct difference between your circumstances and mine. While your corporeal forms want for souls, my past self does not. Mayhap our essences would blend, or mayhap they would curdle. There is no telling what might occur. I would. Tis done. I have inspected the other vessels. They are all ready to receive of our friends' memories. Though it pains me to disappoint you, I feel compelled to explain that the magic in question requires no small amount of preparation. And you expect me to cooperate? Uh, mm. My friend, how did you? No matter, Elidibus, he took us unawares. The vessel bears not only my memories, but my blood. The blood of Allegan royalty, granting him the means to control the tower. With it, he has performed I know not how many summonings, calling forth heroes from across the rift. And, as you can see, the burden upon the tower is beginning to tell.
If you mean to face him alone, I will not allow it. Not this time. <sighs> Elidibus has exploited the people's nobility. Twisted their purest intentions for terrible ends. And I cannot let it stand. As Exarch, it is my duty to protect them. To defend their hopes and dreams. So I am going to the Crystal Tower, with or without your blessing. Though, I would rather it were with. Thank you. I shall send help. Stay strong, my friend, and take heart. By binding Elidibus within the tower, we have done more than simply delay him. Much like our adversary, I am not wont to show my hand prematurely, but the time has come to bring my strongest card to bear. To the tower! Not here either. We must keep climbing. was but a matter of time. I cannot keep up with you, nor will it avail us to make a stand here. You must go on without me. Find Elidibus and stop him. Worry not, my friend. Though I am no warrior, I have learned to hold my own over the years. When first we explored this tower, you and your fellow adventurers formed the van, while I was left to follow in your wake. Suffice it to say, I was not best pleased with the arrangement. How I wished that I could join you. And now I have, here where it all began. I was right to trust in you, and the power of your legacy, of your name, to let them guide my every deed. I did, but I chose not to walk them, thank the gods. Why ever would you ask me such a thing? Why you? Why not you? Had I chosen another, we would never have made it this far. Or do I mistake your meaning? 
Elizabeth spoke in similar terms, you say? How curious. To answer your question, then, I made my choice for reasons which seemed obvious to me, but may not to any other. There were the expectations I placed upon myself before beginning my slumber, and the expectations of those who roused me. Of course, I had the choice to turn my back on a lot of it. But in the end, it was no choice at all. I cherish the time I spent with you and the others. What I wouldn't give to return to those halcyon days. Chasing ancient secrets, overcoming trial after trial with the aid of like-minded comrades. And what remarkable comrades they were. In such company, I felt as if I were a character in the epic tales that had stirred my heart as a boy. As if my dream had come true. It hadn't, of course, for I was no hero. Neither then nor after. Though the world to which I awakened and the first were beset with myriad problems, I rarely knew how best to play my part. There was, however, one thing of which I was certain. That I could not bear to let those dear to me meet a tragic end. I'm afraid our time is up. Go! Rest assured, you haven't seen the last of me. I wouldn't dream of playing my trump card save in your presence. Elidipus, so fixated were you on my memories of the future, you failed to heed the lessons of the past. Your obsession blinded you to the true nature of this tower, this beacon of hope for mankind. Created to serve as a reservoir for the limitless energy of the heavens, to harness and Bind the Boundless, not unlike White Aurasite. Your ill-begotten power, obtained by exploiting that which is best in us. I shall have it, your soul and all! I concede I may have overexerted myself. Steady now and listen. I told you before that I had a plan and that when all is said and done, I would ask a favor of you. We have averted the Eighth Umbral Calamity, found a way for everyone to return to the Source, and, last but not least, we have secured the future of all the people of Norvrand. We have won, my friend.
So, I hope you'll forgive me this moment of selfishness, and while I wouldn't want you to feel obliged, Promise me you'll take me on your next adventure. A journey. Together. That's all I ask. This isn't the end. That we will meet again. Would you believe me? My friend, with you, my mind and memory shall travel to the ends of the world and beyond. But in this place shall my body stand immovable. May it serve as an undying promise, not only to those who look to me for leadership, but to any soul who has known despair that hope is everlasting. Yours is a long road, my friend, and it stretches onto places beyond imagining. With your every step, these grand adventures shall grow more distant and faint. And there may come a day when you forget the faces and voices of those you have met along the way. On that day, I bid you remember this. That no matter how far your journey may take you, you stand where you stand by virtue of the road you walked to get there. For in times of hardship, when you fear you cannot go on, the joy you have known, the pain you have felt, the prayers you have whispered and answered, they shall ever be your strength and your comfort.
This I hope. I believe. Here at memory's end. Indeed. We succeeded in weaving it anew, albeit at a slightly diminished potency than when I had Becklug's assistance. It is no cause for concern, though. The tower is not easily reached, never mind breached. And even should some few succeed, their presence won't escape my notice. Well, if you're certain that's what you... I, I, I mean, if you think I... <sighs> right. <sighs> right. I accept. Henceforth, I shall count myself a scion of the seventh dawn. Grahatia, at your service. When I was a boy, many long years ago, I yearned to stand tall as the heroes of Eld. But like a fool seeking to pluck the stars from the heavens, my every attempt to reprise their deeds fell short. And then, one day, an all but forgotten dream from my youth stood before me, in the flesh. So it was that a new adventure began. That which awaited was a fell beast. Ferocious, ravenous, remorseless. The beast shall kindle the flames of the apocalypse. Into its domain shall the hero set forth for the final chapter in the tale of this star. The famous Lys Hext, former scion and hero of the Alamegan resistance, Grahatir, at your service. I have read much and more about your exploits, Commander. It is a pleasure to finally make your acquaintance. I'll come too. If you don't mind, that is. My... N no, no. That's not... I mean, I... I, I simply thought my knowledge might be of some use. Wait! We're close! So very close! Please, a moment longer! I beg you! There! I was able to memorize the magic before it faded. It still needs to be put to the proof, but I believe we have our cure. The fault is mine. I'm sorry. Thank you. Ah, nothing escapes Master Matoya's inquiring eye. 
As you say, both must be carried out simultaneously. And thus, I propose to imbue Angelo with a tempering treatment in much the same manner as I did the spirit vessels. Be that as it may, certain difficulties are unavoidable. The imbuing process will still require no small amount of ether. And, as I can no longer draw upon the Crystal Tower's stores of energy, I will be compelled to rely on those of others. Excellent. With your permission, then, let us begin. And now, it's my turn. Is done. Well, we seek to go where even the Allegans did not. It was never like to be easy. The rest is up to you, Alize. The treatment itself will take time and focus, so we will need a quiet room. I'm sure our hosts can spare one. I will go with her. It may be a while before we return, so I would ask for your patience and your faith. Your hopes reached Gabu. They helped him to hold on. How remiss of me. Grahatia is my name, and I am proud to call myself a scion. I too wish to offer my gratitude for your invaluable aid in sustaining the Archon's bodies, as well as my apologies. It was my inexpert summoning spell which endangered their lives in the first place. You are too kind. I have also heard much and more about you, Master Matoya. Tis an honor to finally make your acquaintance. Ah, that you may leave to me. Being the only one possessed of royal blood, I alone can imbue the subject with the necessary magic. Then all that remains is for me to imbue her with the magic. My friends, I'm afraid I must trouble you for your ether once more. Ah, that should suffice. Let none pass! We must grant her as much time as we can! Would that there were a cure for the victims of the Tempered. Speaking of which, it does seem awfully quiet. If the erstwhile Azure Dragoon had returned to Ishgard, would it not be a source of general excitement? Estinian Wormblood, the Azure Dragoon, he who fought and felled the Dread Worm Nidhogg at the Warrior of Light's side. To think the day would come when I should see this living legend with my own eyes. I see. As the one who first summoned Bahamut, you believe she may be able to shine some light on his latest incarnation. I will admit, he is not exactly as I imagined him either. Based on what I had read of the man, I think I was expecting someone a little less... blunt? We won't know for certain until the shackles are removed. Many have been subjected to the Allegan's dark arts. Their flesh irrevocably altered. For such tortured souls, I fear there can be no salvation. Urianje, your timing could not be better. Understood, we're on our way. It's Bahamut, he's been sighted over Pagalthan. 
He flies for the largest amount of settlement in the region, at the head of a vast host, including dragons. And thus did we make allies of the Amalgia. I presume your role as a student of Baldessian will carry some weight with the Forum? Might I suggest that we continue this conversation after the battle? It would appear that Telophoroi have already arrived. Are you alright, Tataru? You seem positively distraught. The day has barely dawned, my fellow early riser. Though we're hardly alone in that. Envious of those still sleeping soundly, no doubt. Called out to you, you say? Hmm. I've heard nothing myself. In any case, I dare say the sea air will do you good. Why not join the others on deck? Charlian should be coming into view at any moment. Of course. The immigration offices were this way, as I recall. Shall we? Greetings. We've just arrived and are eager to make our way into the city. Would you be so kind as to process our entry applications? I am. Vrahat here of the students of Baldassian at your service. I was assigned to an Aeorsian survey team, but have returned to assist with the reformation of my order. My associates here will provide additional support. These last two are not Charlian natives, but you will find their credentials are in order. An application was made in advance. Fortuno's refusal in Gridania had those same undertones. It was as if, having stared unblinking into the face of impending doom, he had simply turned away to pursue something more important. But what could that possibly be? Allow me to offer my assistance. I have some small amount of experience in the field of research. Forgive me. I was careless. Whence came this revelation? Then it seems your findings support my own. The reason I visited the restricted shelves was to study records of the Forum's policy-making process. To better understand the historical trends underlying their most major decisions. At first glance, the positions of neutrality in war and the accumulation of knowledge above all else appear constant and consistent. The unchanging pillars of Charlian society. And once upon a time I might have left it at that. These days, however, I am more attuned to the subtleties of governance, and so I noticed something... odd. From a particular point in time, the purpose of these policies shifted. No longer was knowledge preserved for the benefit of society. Rather, society was to be gradually reshaped to ensure the preservation of knowledge. The most conspicuous and telling change was the one which befell Labyrinthos. Once little more than an oversized storehouse, an enormous allocation of funds saw it transformed into an advanced research and archival facility. I also discovered a fascinating account on the finances of our Dravanian colony. 
The settlement attracted students from far and wide, and the connections and tuition fees thus acquired were funneled into further improvements for the archives. Now, there is no question that our nation's progress is tied to the acquisition of wisdom. Nevertheless, the vast resources diverted for this purpose borders on the obscene. But returning to the matter of when, our change in course appears to have been made some 270 years ago. May we not then divide our forces? Those proficient in healing will focus on sustaining the captives. That duty can be covered by Urianger, Kryl, Yostela and myself. The remaining scions will proceed with the search for the core. Admittedly, this strategy puts both parties at greater risk but it should bolster our chances of saving the Arcosodora by a considerable margin. If you're to fight primals, then you'd best have at least one healer with you. That she does. But I think Alize herself would assert that she's at her best when she's charging onto the breach. And from what I recall from the Grand Cosmos, there's a spring in her step when she fights by your side. Of course not. As our most talented healer, we need you leading the van. Fighting primals on the front lines. We fortified the captives with what magics we could. Have the defenses been disabled? All appears quiet for the moment. Oh, what of the prisoners below? I pray I'm not too late. Much better, thank you. Harness remedies are certainly potent in more ways than one. Full glad I am to see you all unharmed. Speaking of one's physical condition, Mistress Kryle, I hear you recently played literal host to Heidelin herself. Indeed, and in turn I felt buoyed by that radiance. It was akin to spotting a beacon and knowing we were on the right path. I know we've not yet triumphed over the Tlophoroi, or learned the full breadth of the Forum's plans. But even within the midst of our struggles, we find small moments of joy to sustain us. Rare and hard won perhaps, but it is this pursuit of happiness that gives us the strength to carry on day after day. Hey! That's mine. Mm, only barely. And even at my best, I'm still too slow to wield it effectively in battle. Mayhap I simply require more practice with this new magic. Aye, and from a veritable mountain of arcane tomes at that. Twas necessary to facilitate my solitary explorations. I... Uh, yes, well, after a fashion. Tall, you see. 
The shelves, they're too tall for me. And I could hardly move the library's platforms without attracting attention now, could I? Wait, I know you. <laughs> Twould be my honor to be of service. Though I doubt that you of all people need rely on my tricks. Ah, speak of the devil. And now, now, all's well that ends well. Are you all right? Who are you? Perfectly fine, yes. I hope the same can be said of you. I am pleased to report you are very much alive. What was that? Oh, apologies. I, um, I, I didn't mean to... <clears throat> if you could spare a moment before bed. Thank you. I fear this may be the last quiet night we have to talk for quite some time. I am troubled of late. Unwarranted concerns, perhaps. I hope. Nevertheless, I feel compelled to share them with you. Though you have bested your enemies thus far, Xenos and even Zodiac, your victories have come at a considerable cost to yourself. No one is without their limits, and you are no exception. I worry the added weight of the final days will prove more than you can bear. It is surely too much for any one man. But you needn't bear it alone. Let me share your burden. My, uh, carrying capacity pales in comparison to yours, but I could still help. Shoulder the occasional satchel from your ever-growing mountain of... Um, baggage. You have already done so much to help relieve me of mine own encumbrances. It is only fair that I repay you in kind. Of course, it needn't be only troubles we share. Moments of joy may seem few and far between now, but there will come a time when we look back fondly on this journey. The inquiry at the Forum, our march through the snows of Garlemald, our impromptu dinner in this very room. All of it. And that is to say nothing of the journeys yet to come. To the ends of the world and beyond. Uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, but tomorrow will be no less busy than today, and I've kept you from your rest long enough. Sleep well, my friend. They return not even to the ethereal sea. Indeed. 
We thought to share what we have gleaned, that we might together gain a greater understanding of present circumstances. If I may, there was another detail that troubled me. We have it on good authority that Karl Zahl's transformation took place before the skies began to burn. Enough! You must run! For their sake and your own! Yes, you will survive. You must. Be strong, my friends! Fear not, for we will defeat these abominations! Brave men and women of the Radiant Host, lend your Stola and Thancred your aid! Let not a single beast escape! The rest of you, flee this place! Carry the wounded if you must! Head indoors or underground! Above all, stay calm! No beast will follow you, we will see to that! Go with them, will you? We will save these people, as many as we can! Let us hope they accept him. Not alive as such, but not quite dead. Elidibus. I sealed him in the white horosite of the Crystal Tower back on the first. Contained within that reservoir of ether that maintains it, ether that is returned little by little to the sea, naught may remain of his soul. However, if part of it lingers, we might be able to speak with him there. I, no, we can no longer make that journey, but you, my friend, still can. Yes, we can but act and hope for the best. I understand your trepidation, but there is merit in making the journey regardless. You could see with your own eyes whether the first, too, faces its final days. Thank you, my friend. That would mean much to me. Think a withdrawal might be in order? Well then, I'd say it's high time we threw caution to the winds. There's not the barest trace of ether. Maybe there really is no way to bring them back. Look out! Ah. Get out of here! Quickly! I won't lose them! Not a one! This will be a brighter future!
I won't let a madman's apocalypse ruin everything we've fought to achieve! Everything's in order? I trust? You'll be alright. Hurry to the airship. Excellent. You can regale us with tales of your most recent sojourn to the first while we wait. Did you... hear something just now? Um... Oh, I dare say you'll warm up quickly once you're aboard the airship. Sat shoulder to shoulder with our fur-covered friends. Do you speak of Alagon refined adamantite, perchance? Only in the most general terms, I'm afraid. Twas an alloy of Alagon make, but the secrets of its production were closely guarded. As I recall, the record stated it was vital to Dalamud's construction and launch. Logically, such an invaluable alloy would have been utilized solely where absolutely necessary, in components intended to conduct or collect surpassing amounts of ether. Any extant instrumentation or devices would have likely found their way into the hands of etherologists or enthusiasts. The vessel is essentially ready for departure. All that remains is to load the final batch of supplies and see everyone on board. Once we've readied the ether burner, that is. If we finish loitering about the harbour, might I suggest we put our plans into motion? People are beginning to look confused. Let us hold nothing back. For the people of this world and those beyond the rift! Feels familiar. Well, it is good to be uh wait. What are you what am I Gods don't tell me I fell asleep? Oh how embarrassing. So what were the two of you doing here? And you? I was honored to host this company in the Crystarium. To stand with you all as we confronted the truth of the star itself. I really don't know what we'd do without you. Thank you. For everything. Is this... a dead star? Meteon holds too much sway here. How do we contend with a foe who can unmake us on a whim? There's a wind! Is that... another star? Perhaps there is a way. First, consider the world that has been recreated here. Its inhabitants were machines who gathered combat data to enhance themselves. And among the many wars they waged, the most notable was that against the dragons. The significance of these details may be lost on you now. But they lead me to believe this was the home world of Omega. According to the records I read in the future, 
It possessed a single weakness. Lightning. Huh. As a matter of fact, I am. Ask yourselves this. Why would an entity as puissant as Omega not be designed to suppress the effects of lightning? My thoughts exactly. And there is a good chance the same is true of the Omicrons and their devices. So, shall I cast caution to the wind and try something reckless and dramatic? Very well. Here I go. Worry not, I will be careful. And if it fails, we can think of something else. Wait! We have questions for you! Of late, no mission orders have been issued. Why not? Has there been some manner of trouble? I could activate it again, but I doubt it would be productive. What do you think? May we ask why you did this? From what we gather, it seems to be a personal matter. It is not our place to pass judgment on the deeds of the Omicrons. But surely, this does not have to spell the end of your people. With your power and knowledge, the possibilities are endless. Why not seek out a new purpose? Ah. Oh. I believe I know how to overcome this despair. The words are ready in my mind, but ere I speak them, I want you to make me a promise. Be it across time or space, our promises have always connected us. And so I ask that you indulge me once more, that this won't be the end. Forcing you through this again is the last thing I want, and I'm sorry. But we've never broken a promise to each other. So I ask that you have faith in us, and hear my request. Is that so? In that case, I won't hold back. First, I want to visit Ishgard with you. Properly. We scarcely had time to look around last time. I should like it very much if you could show me the sights. Next, you must regale me with your greatest adventures, in the places where you lived them, if possible. I may have read about all your deeds, but there is no substitute for a first-hand account. And last but not least, a new adventure together, unlike any we've experienced before. We'll travel the lands, cross the seas, and take to the skies upon the eternal wind, and it will be marvelous. It will. If you would humor me a moment, 
When we awaken each morning, how can we prove that we're the same individual who retired the night before? Through the remembrance of past events, we might say, we have our memories. Yet there are times when we forget or recall incorrectly. What of our bodies, then? It is the same one, we might say. Yet, technically speaking, as living beings, our bodies are constantly changing. It will never be as it was at an earlier point in time. Our souls are no more immutable. On our star, people are known to inherit the souls of others, yet they are decidedly different beings. For my part, I've subjected my totality to much and more. I've made my body into an extension of a tower, blended my soul and memories with those of another self. And each time I would ask myself, what is it that makes me me? No, but that doesn't mean I'm confused. It simply means I'm the same as everyone else. So I posit this. Who we were need not prescribe what we now hold in our hearts. Whatever came before, what matters most is the present. For me, that is being here with my friends, full proud of how much we've grown together. So I urge you to not give up. Heed your heart's desire and hope that the future you long for shall be realized. We are not unlike you and I. I too have struggled to find the courage to express and embrace my wants. If you like, I will tell you a tale. A tale of a world on the brink. Of a people who never gave up on the future. Of a man who realized his grandest dreams, and then awakened to a grander reality. Aye, as soon as we've averted the final days. No you don't! The hope will shine again! Can you hear me? Say... Open your... Please. Yes, you're alive. <laughs> you're alive. After what you've done, you're the last person to be asking that. You... How can you keep your promise if you're not here? I, for one, look forward to your future successes, Tataru, as do I our next meeting. Commissions have been piling up in our absence, and they must be dealt with ere we begin our work in earnest. Fair point. 
Ah, Ergica, my good man. Would you be so kind as to... I wish you had sent word ahead. I thought I was having visions for a moment there. But what brings you to the Annex, my friend? Surely you haven't come all this way just to watch us shuffle dusty papers around? The Treasure Vault of Alzadal III. Are you sure? I'd hate to leave you short-handed. Well, I guess we're off on another adventure already. Have you asked anyone else to come along? Then might I suggest we invite your Stola? Ever since the Scions disbanded, she spent most of her time cloistered within the Great Goobal Library, hoping to piece together a method to traverse the rift. It would seem, however, that whatever wisdom she sought there was not to be found. She arrived in Charlian the other day. We spoke briefly before she began her search of Numenon. Considering what you've told us of Alzadal's extraordinary feats, I do believe your Stola would be more than interested to hear what you have to say. Splendid! Then let us head to the archives at once! None can deny the benefit of seeing something with your own eyes. If our expedition leader has no objections, I say we extend Uriange an invitation once we've spoken with your Stola. Right! Then it's off to the library! I've never known your Stola to doze off in the middle of research before. You needn't be so hard on yourself. The leap I made with the Crystal Tower was not achieved in an afternoon. It was the culmination of a collective effort spanning generations. A scholar in her element. Akiali, by ship. But before that, we thought to extend an invitation to Uriange as well. He was in Thalmazane, last we heard. And this has what to do with treasure vaults, exactly? Counting Estinian, we number five now, yes? Without knowing what traps or perils await unwary feet, we may be wise to refrain from recruiting others. What have we here? Vritra! Oh, my apologies. Should I continue calling you Varshan? Not the time for frivolity, my friend. Not the time. No, my friend. Small though it may be, this is a functioning gate into the void. Thank you.
Thank you.